right, what's up guys? Uh, Ryan here. What I want to talk to you guys about in this video is shoe selection, all right? So, uh, you know, this is a typical example of a quiver of shoes that I would have when I was running professionally. Obviously, I don't need all these options uh, today, but um, I want to kind of take you guys through, like, how do you pick out the right pair of shoes for both you and for the run that you're doing? So first, let's start out with how do you pick out the right pair of shoes for you. Um, so this one, I always recommend that athletes go into their local running store. Those guys are trained to watch you run. They're trained to see what your foot strike is doing, pro name, super name, and they're trained to give you a selection of shoes that's right for you. So I can't stress this enough. Really, really important because you can get hurt just by wearing the wrong pair of shoes. So let's not make that mistake. Let's not like go on Amazon and find the coolest looking pair of shoes, the one that everyone's getting, and just buy that shoe because it's popular. Um, you need to find the shoe that's right for you. Super, super important. Um, so once you find that shoe, you might need a variety of shoes. So, uh, for example, for myself, when I was running professionally, this would be my Easy Day shoe. So this is a Gel Cumulus, A6 Gel Cumulus. And uh, this shoe has a ton of cushion in it, so this would really help me from getting hurt. So whenever I was doing an easy run, I was on dirt surfaces, training in this guy and I uh, usually tr change an amount about every 300 miles but you know you might be able to get away with 400 miles I wouldn't go above 400 miles like the shoe is the most important piece of running commit of equipment that you can have so let's let's not get them super worn you know often oftentimes I'd write the date that I started using the shoe so that'd give me I just write it with the sharpie on the side that give me a rough estimate of how many shoes uh, miles were on the shoe or you can just kind of look at the bottom treading here too and you you don't want it it's kind of like your tires on your car you know once you're seeing that like that's getting worn out and I mean these are still in pretty good shape but you can see a little bit of wear here and here um, you don't you don't want to run through wearing shoes. I used to think it was like a badge of honor to like just totally have it completely shredded and like nothing left on the tread. But really, that's just stupid. That's just asking to get hurt. So let's not do that. So uh, training shoe, I really really encourage you guys like try and find a cushion based shoe for your easy runs. And if you don't have the option to run on dirt and grass, which is the best thing you could do for your easy runs. I uh, encourage you guys to get something like this, which I use this on the 7 uh, Marathon Challenge, 7 Marathon Challenge, the World Marathon Challenge, the 7 Marathon, 7 Days, 7 Continents, um, your really big, cushy shoe. So this shoe's a lot heavier than, say, you know, this shoe or any of the other shoes, but it provides a lot of extra cushion, feels really good for my legs, protects them. And I know, like, there's research out there that shows that, like, the amount of cushion in a shoe doesn't change the amount of impact in, on your legs and your body, but I just haven't experienced that to be true. Like, for me, every time I've tried training in a minimal shoe, um, I've gotten hurt. And I've tried to do it the right way, you know. And any time you're making a change with your shoe wear, you want it to be a gradual change so um, for example I just recently got Hana in a pair of shoes not this exact shoe but a shoe very very similar to this um, because it has a lot more rocker in it and she has a really hard time getting on her toes she's a heel striker and so you know for you guys who are heel strikers I'd really encourage you like find a shoe like this that has a ton of rocker in it I know you know all I know is a6 um, I know a6 just came out with the new version I think it's called the glide um, it's a shoe just like this on even a little bit more rocker and just so uh, puts you up on your toes a little bit more allows you to be up on your toes more feels more natural to be on your toes um, so really really good for for those who are heel strikers but a shoe like this like I'll have her do one run a week in them first and then maybe the next week two runs a week and then the next week three runs a week so you want to transition into new shoes not just like go straight into a new pair of shoes that you've never trained in because the chance of injuries it just goes skyrockets at that point so um, and this shoe is really interesting too because this is very similar to a lot of the new racing flats coming out on the market um, with Look how I cannot bend this shoe in half. Like, I don't know. I, I don't even know what they put in this shoe, but, you know, it is that rigid. You know, we talk about rigidity with your legs as being good and not being overly flexible so that your leg's like a spring and you're popping off the ground. Same thing with your shoes. And we've seen shoes come a long, long way since the day when I was running. Um, this is what I used to race my marathons and half marathons in, the gel hyperspeed. And uh, look how, look at this shoe. Look, there's like one finger, right? So that compared to now, you know, like that's that's the difference. And because what they're realizing is that 
when you contact the ground, when you have a rigid shoe, your ground contact time is much less. And that's the name of the game in running. Getting your feet on and off the ground as quick as you can. We call it like popping off the ground. Like you want to feel like the ground's on fire and you're popping off it. And it's really easy to do that with a rigid shoe, whereas with a really flexible cushion based shoe, it's really easy to just kind of melt into the asphalt and have a really slow reaction time off the ground. Um, but yeah, this is what I use throughout my career. Now I'd probably trend towards like a carbon fiber plated racing shoe. But you can see the big difference between a racing shoe and a training shoe, right? So like we'll have you do all your easy running in, the, in a shoe like this, cushion base shoe, and then all your hard running in what you plan to race in, your racing flat. Um, and racing flats vary a lot from flat to flat. So this, this one is a marathoning slash half marathoning flat. It's got quite a bit of cushion in here, um, a little bit bigger of a racing flat. Whereas if you're running a 5K, a mile race, a 10K even, you'd want something a little bit more minimal, a little bit less cushion, um, something that's going to fit your foot a little tighter and be lighter. Because being light is, is really important for shoe because that weight is on the end of your pendulum um, and it's far away from your center of mass. So every ounce is gonna make a big difference in terms of how heavy your feet feel. So picking out a light shoe is super important, but not so much on the easy days. On the easy days, we just want a really protective shoe that's gonna keep you from getting hurt. So you'll work out in these when you're doing your hard workouts, your long threshold runs, um, maybe the second half of your long runs to get your legs used to the pounding of wearing a more minimal shoe. But we don't want you training in these guys every day. Um, so I talked about these shoes with the cushion. And then uh, lastly, I like to have kind of like a mid-range shoe. So you know, I have my cushion base shoe, I got my racing flat. This one's kind of right in the middle of both of them. So it's giving me a little bit more cushion than a racing flat. Um, and it, yet it's a little bit lighter than uh, than a cushion base shoe. And so what this is great for is like kind of those, say I would do uphill runs in them, uh, I would do fartlek runs in them, um, progressive runs, just kind of like runs that are, they're still workouts, but they're not like crazy intense or crazy fast. Um, even like long runs, oftentimes I do in these guys too, where I wanna condition my legs to the pounding that they're gonna be experiencing in the race. Um, this, this is a really nice way to kind of do that without destroying your legs. So I would use this shoe maybe like once, twice a week. I'd use this shoe twice a week for workouts and then every other day, you know, I'm, I'm on this guy on soft surfaces. So, so anyways, that's a little bit about, you know, the whole quiver of shoes that you can have. I realize, you know, not everyone gets their shoes for free. So you might have to pick and choose between what shoes, you know, you, you wear and you get and what shoes you don't. Um, one last quick kind of note too is like, just pay attention to your body size. That really makes a big difference in selecting shoes. So um, for say, for example, if you're a 200 pound male marathoner, I might recommend that you just use your training shoe for your racing shoe in the marathon just because this is going to offer so much more in the way of protection um, on your body keeping it from getting hurt uh, protecting you from the pounding the impact that being 200 pounds has every single time you contact the ground like this might be in the long run a better shoe selection for you than this shoe because your legs are gonna be so hammered when you get to mile 20 from pounding 200 pounds on your legs every stride with this shoe um, that you'd actually be better off in something a little bit more cushion based or maybe it's in the middle mid-range shoe um, so just you it's something you gotta just play with in training see what shoe you like the best what feels the best what you feel the fastest in but then also take into consideration okay how much pounding is there going to be on my body because i know a lot of you guys are getting ready for marathons and that's you know a big part of running a good marathon is is getting your use your body and your legs used to the pounding but then also managing that with the proper shoe selection so just a little bit on shoes guys i hope that's been helpful a lot of cushion in those but you got the fibin fiber carbon fibin 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 carbon <laughs> the fiber carbon, carbon fiber, fiber. <laughs> the carbon cut. fiber plate cut that stuff <laughs> no more videos <laughs>